Coach Dan Tortora, wake up call DT.com. Just what you can say there's been changes, you know, offensively and defensively at the coordinator positions. Just what you can say about going through the spring, the leadership that's there, and, and maybe the vision that you saw from both of these gentlemen that can lead you to a better record moving forward. Well, our vision is a program vision. Uh, Bill Sheridan on defense was on the defensive staff a year ago. Bill's a veteran guy, been a coordinator in the NFL, two different stops. Um, and so I think Bill brought you know, great confidence and stability to the defense. I wouldn't say that necessarily there's any specific changes coming. I mean, we have a system of defense, and his personality will attach to that. On offense, Mike Bajakian came in, and Mike's coming in, and we're running the offense that we run at Boston College. And uh, Mike is assimilated into that outstanding, uh, Lee. Um, he is a uh, very, very bright guy with a wealth of experience, um, great quarterback developer, uh, really has a great background in the throw game. So I think you know he'll be able to bring some, some, some of his um, experiences and ideas into our throw game. But uh, we're remaining who we are, uh, which is you know the greatest thing is having program continuity. I believe. Um, so you know, there's no terminology changes for anybody. You know we we had a great spring on both sides of the ball, including special teams. Had great development. Left side coach, third row. Bob Holliday, WRL.com. Following up on the question about all the offenses with catchy names in the league, how would you describe your Boston College offense, and how does it complement the skills of A.J. Dillon? I mean, we're a pro-style offense, but we're playing in tempo. That's what we are. And that was my vision when I came out of Florida, and I became a head coach at Temple. I wanted to evolve to that style of offense using multiple tight ends. We play in 12 grouping, which is two tight ends in every snap so that we don't have grouping changes on the field on downs and we're going at a rocket speed but yet you're coming at you with a multiple run game power game inside zone outside zone game um, great play action and, and a uh, pro passing attack so and i think that suits aj's talents perfectly um, because you know we have a you know the run game the ability to run the football is in our plan to win and, and real important to us and I think we have a sophisticated run game, which allows a big, powerful back uh, in, in a pro-style run game to be obviously highly effective. So I think it's a perfect match. Our offense um, for AJ's talents, and obviously, you know, we, we have recruited to that. Uh, so I'm excited about where we are. Coach, all the way in the back, camera stand, young man with the tan vest and the bow tie. Eric Johnson, WSLS uh, TV. Coach, I just wanted your thoughts on opening up with an ACC opponent. I know some coaches have mixed feelings about that, but uh, what are your, your take on that in, in opening up with Virginia Tech? I think it's a great opener. Um, obviously a permanent crossover for us, a conference game against one of the elite teams in the conference. I think our winter, our spring, and our preseason camp, we have the full attention of our team. There's a sense of urgency. There's no mystery. And we've got to be playing our A game. And so, you know, sometimes I think when you have an opener that maybe is a little less, you have a tendency to sleepwalk through camp a little bit. And uh, that's not the case for us. So um, I kind of like to deal with what is. What is is we're playing Virginia Tech. Those are the positives of playing Virginia Tech on opening day. And uh, that's all I'm really concerned about right now. So. We've got, our, we've got our work cut out for us, but we're really excited about that opportunity. Go back to your right, first row, back to Dan. Coach, obviously recruiting the Northeast is, is an integral part of what you do, and Central New York I know is important. John Phillips being on the offensive line, just what you can say about how he's elevated his game, and then secondly, just the talent you, you've been able to find from Central New York. Well, John Phillips is... Uh, had a great year last year and is, and, and, and is going to have an elite senior year. Our offensive line is going to be outstanding. It may be better than it was a year ago, and I thought we had one of the best offensive lines in the country. So that's how strong I feel about our offensive line, which is spearheaded by John Phillips. And uh, I just marvel at the way that he's developed. I mean, he's a classic example. Like Chris Lindstrom was a year ago. John's another classic example of 
recruiting those guys that are high character guys that fit the BC mold, developing and, and staying in development, getting into their junior and senior year, and, and then having great breakout seasons those last two years. I would say that's classic where John is right now. So expect him to have a, a big, big year this year. Uh, Central New York is a big part for us. You know, we are a, you know, we're the Northeast Power Five school here at Boston College. We're, we're New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, obviously inside out, Massachusetts, Connecticut. Those are all big areas for us and all the Catholic leagues as we spread into Ohio and Indianapolis and even out to California. But that five hour radius for us is critically, critically important. And as I started out my coaching career at Syracuse, I was responsible for recruiting in the Northeast and developed you know, a real affinity to, to the Northeast and understood it, I'm from the Northeast. And, and, and that's the integral part. If you're, in the, if you're in the Northeast and you're coaching college football, you've got to be able to recruit in this area and uh, have great relationships with the high school coaches. And uh, that part of the country, you know, I spent four years there, as I said, coaching there and developed great relationships there. And through the years, I've always recruited there. And it's been very, very good to us and will continue to be. So, you know, uh, I don't believe in my heart you can really make it uh, without being successful in these areas uh, at, at, at these college uh, jobs in, in the Northeast. Coach, to your left, first row. Coach Steve Reef and the Associated Press. Similar question, what I asked Tanner. Uh, you know, Clemson's 34-2 and two against ACC po right. opponents the last several years, uh, national champions. They come in as overwhelming favorites. What, what do you got to do to beat them? Can anybody beat them? And how do you go about doing it? Listen, they're an elite program. They are, they are two national titles themselves. We've had three national titles from the ACC in the last five years, which goes to show you that this is, in my opinion, and I think I'm qualified to make the statement because I've coached in most of these conferences. This is the elite conference in college football. And you have three national titles in five years coming from this side of the division, one from Florida State and two from Clemson. Clemson's an elite program. I watched those, the playoff game, the national title game, and of course all their games in between leading up to that. And you can, we can all agree that that team was elite, head and shoulders above everybody else. Wasn't even close. And uh, so we play them every year. We played them last year. Uh, we've played them, I don't like to talk like, you know, it's not like darts. You know, but we, we've played well against Clemson. I respect Dabo and everything he's done, not just in his program, but what he's done for college football in our conference. Um, it'll be an extremely challenging game. What do you do to beat Clemson? You've got to play your A game. I mean, you, you've got to take care of the football. You've got to be able to run the football, and you've got to find a way to disrupt them on offense. Those are easier things said than done. That's very, very hard to do against them. They're recruiting at a very high level. But every team in college football is beatable now. Every team, on any given day. Uh, so what we, what we have to focus on is what we have to do to be the very best football team we can be. I think we're a physical team, and I think that that's a good way to start with physical toughness, and we have playmakers, and we just have to make sure that when you play a team like a Clemson, you've got to be playing your A game. That's a, I would say that that's not exactly uh, you know, earth-shattering commentary. But, uh, but I'm, I've been in this too long and seen a lot of great teams. And that's why you play the game every Saturday, man. You had it up and you play it. And you play it hard for four quarters because in college football, in any level of football, we got good players, they got good players. Let it all hang out and see where you end up in the end. But that's an elite football team, and I'm glad they're in our conference. Keep your view to your left, back to the third row with Bob. Coach, you've taken teams to the postseason now five out of six years, mm -hmm. a run to the postseason, pretty rare in Boston College school history. But you come across as the type of coach who's not satisfied with that type of milestone. What's the next horizon for Boston College? Well, at BC, I think we've been to 17 bowls in like the last 20, 20 years, something like that. So we've had a pretty good bowl record there. Uh, and we're continuing that. And we're proud of that. What do we have to do to take the next step? Well. The next step for us is to compete for a conference championship. That's what we need to do. I mean, I think when, you, when I talk about goals of a team, you start out with winning the opener, right? You've got to win the opener. Next thing you have to do is you've got to become bowl eligible. The next thing you have to do is you want to compete for a conference championship. In order to do that, you know, we've got to be able to stay consistent in our level of play 
through the course of the season. And we have to develop our depth so that injuries don't unseat us. And that's, that's where I think our challenge lies, is staying healthy and staying consistent. We had an opportunity a year ago, we were seven and, I wanna say we were seven and two. Um, we were ranked, whatever we were, 17th in the country on game day at Boston College, and we were playing Clemson. And so you're going seven and one, seven and two, whatever we were at that point. We're going into our, arguably our ninth game of the season, and we're playing the defending national champions um, for essentially a shot at the conference championship. So in week nine, that was happening last year. So the next step is winning that game. And, and that's not an easy task, as we just well documented. But, uh, but that's what makes this conference so competitive and, uh, and exciting. So we've got to stay consistent, stay healthy, and we've got to be able to beat a team like Clemson in order to have a shot to compete for that conference championship and win it. Stay on the left side, Coach. This time, fourth row towards the uh, far left. Coach, you, you guys, Louisville, came to you guys last year. You beat them, I believe, by 18. Just They weren't very competitive a lot last year. Just what did you see was wrong with them? Maybe that they weren't, they were, they weren't doing right. And then I don't know if you've met Coach Satterfield yet at all, but just what have been your impressions of him? Well, Coach has uh, got a great track record. He's a heck of a football coach. He's won uh, in major college football and uh, quite confident he'll do fantastic things at Louisville. Um, such a great place, and such a great commitment to, to football there. So, uh, and they have, they certainly have very talented players there. Um, you know, I, I have enough issues that I have to worry about. I try not to really worry too much about what other programs' issues are, but uh, rest assured that uh, that program's in great hands. And um, again, it's, We'll be back and competing in the elite conference of the ACC and uh, certainly at the top of it, which they've done for a number of years. Um, so uh, certainly glad to welcome Coach into the conference, and I know that great things are going to happen. Coach, from the podium, you talk about taking the next step, and coaches always talk about being on schedule. Yeah. They're on schedule for the first couple of years of their tenure at a school. This will be your seventh season. Is there still a schedule? <laughs> well, yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, win, you know, wins the schedule. I mean, you know, um, as someone mentioned, we've been to five bowl games in the last six years, you know, and, uh, and we're proud of that because um, of the competitiveness of the side of the division that we play in. That's not, that's a pretty formidable task. Um, the next step. I'm a simple person. I mean, is to win eight and then to win nine and then to win ten. And, and, and those are the next steps. How do you do that? I think the margin for error is small. The difference between a six-win season and a nine-win season isn't really that great. Um, but I think that you need some good fortune. You need to have recruited well so that you have enough depth to sustain the physicality of our conference play. Um, but I think, you know, for us, let me be, I'll even be more specific for you. I think for us, we need to improve on third down, on offense and on defense. That was an important thing for us, that we feel like if we, can improve, if we can improve on third down, that's going to be able to bring us a couple more wins into our program, for sure. And, 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 and for us to improve nationally on third down on both sides of the ball, it's not a, it, it's not a huge deal. It's, it's a handful of plays through the season that we've got to make. So we've really super focused on all spring and put a lot of emphasis on third and medium, really is what I'm talking about on both sides of the ball. And we'll, we, we do something we call Irene, where you know, remember the Black Hawk Down movie? And the guy says, Irene, I repeat, Irene. Remember that movie? So we have this choppers in the middle of practice, chopper noise come, and then the sirens start going off, and our offense meets our defense at midfield, and I give them a situation that they don't know that's going to come. And it'll be a third medium. It might be a third and six, win or loser. It's all on the line. 
And, and what we do before that horn blows is we put them in a calisthenic mode so we exhaust them completely and that battle through fatigue so that they can come out of that fatigue and still be at their peak performance in these critical downs. And then at the end of it, the losers got up downs and the winner is off to the next period. And, and, and we're trying to simulate putting a point of emphasis on third down because I think that's a huge deal for us right now this year along the lines of taking the next step. So I just want to just give you a general statements about taking the next step. Those are two specifics that we need to do so that we can take the next step. Coach, as always, we enjoy the time. Thank you very much. Thank you.